Medin de Benjamin Akako na ni ameba be ka achemwi eh ni tie no ye freno blunt thoughts na che say eh ne no make a podcast adio enso no ni ameba ka no e ho asem efa ya pomoden e ne ago kan si ho My name is Benjamin Akako welcome to my blunt thoughts uh, this Friday morning and all I was saying in chi was that basically I'm going to be talking about our health and sports in Ghana so I've titled these blunt thoughts calf on its knees and african games without game how ghana's misleaders keep letting us down calf of course the comfort not your teaching hospital on its knees and african games without game how ghana's misleaders keep letting us down stay with me and then the kakra um it will be a little lengthy but stay with me it will be well worth your time because i want to break down some crucial issues and i'm starting with health health is our wealth as human beings but what is our health system like and we should be concerned especially when you look at some of the circumstances surrounding some of the deaths of crucial leaders we've had in this country pv obing former president atta mills um Amy Saatha, the former vice president, so many of them. Now we can talk about Dr. John Kuma and the story, the behind the scenes stories about going to a certain medical facility, not having, in fact, cuff in the picture. And ha wanting to be flown to Accra, having to come by road and everything else that may have happened. Could that have been present, uh, prevented? No one knows, but it's a loss to us, no matter how you feel or where you lie on the political spectrum. But let's focus on CAF for a bit, for starters, yeah? So Ghana's public health facilities dilemma. And yes, I am fully aware of the fact that there have been some negotiations with the doctors and everything, but this is the true state of affairs. The GMA is to embark on a nationwide strike in solidarity with CAF doctors if grievances are not addressed. That has been the threat, though now we hear there's been some interaction with them. And then you look at the public health facilities issue. Accommodation challenge. They are facing eviction. That is what they've said. They've said that, look, you're asking us for letters and stuff. These people are coming to us saying, you must get out of the place. These are medical doctors serving us, right? And the threat, if you don't get this sorted out, will embark on an indefinite strike. Now, how many are involved? At least 20 doctors and other cath workers and doctors from other hospitals as well involved in this mess. And you know why it's a mess? For years, especially in the Ashanti region and other places, there's been a lot of talk about this, where some of these medical doctors, where some of these medical professionals live ramshackle buildings we've broke you know the news we've spoken about we've broken the news we've spoken about some of these issues and the dilapidated structures they are in so this didn't just happen overnight it's a long-standing problem but why must it be the case why next slide now if you look at Ghana's public health facilities their dilemma in terms of average OPD attendance and mind you Cats, you know, inpatient or whatever, those who go to cath every day, every week, every month, are way more than some of the other outfits, including Kolebu and um, Rich, all those others. A lot of them, about four of them put together. But if you look at the daily averages, 1,093 per month, that's 32,790. Do you know what that means? Per year, 393,480. You need the right systems, processes, and medical personnel to be able to deal with those numbers. But what is the situation? Recently, we went there. Yesterday, we were there. People were not getting treatment on the back of some of these issues. Next slide. Now, it gets even worse because it's not just the lack of logistics and infrastructure and, yes, even residential areas and the threat of being asked to, you know, to be evicted. But the ECG is also in the fray. Why? They have said that they would disconnect you if you failed to pay your bills in 72 hours. That has been their directive to some of these medical facilities. Well, it's interesting, right? Because Samuel Dubik Mahama, the managing director of ECG, recently said, well, Parliament is doing its work. We are also doing our work. So I guess 
they are doing their work. But why should it come to this? What's the tale of the tape? Next slide. Now, if you look at the health facilities involved, as far as the ECG is concerned, you are looking at a whopping 91. 91. Yes, you're seeing right. 91 of our medical facilities. Can you imagine? Cogitate. Think around it. If all these 91 facilities were affected by power outages, even if intermittently, do you realize what that would do to healthcare? Do you see why sometimes I say we have misleaders? How can you think, even if other sectors of the economy are going to face these, industry and, and places like, look, you don't determine when I could be here right now. Within a few minutes, I could be ill. I would need emergency treatment. It could happen. And then what? So many people die needless deaths in this country because of, I'm sorry, stupidity. Some people who should do their work and are not doing it. Some systems we have the wherewithal to put in place and we are not doing it. These doctors, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's there. You can fault them in some cases. But, but listen, if you don't put in place the right mechanisms, imagine being evicted, thinking about your landlord evicting you or something of that nature happening or some contractor on your neck every day. And yet you are supposed to go and concentrate. That, that doctor just might even prescribe the wrong medication to somebody because their mind is not where it ought to be. Why? 91. Total debt involved, 261 million Ghana cities. But let's go further. Because if you look at the key hospitals involved, yes, your Kolebu is there. Kolebu Teaching Hospital, 10.2 million Ghana cities. 37 military hospital, 33.5 million Ghana cities. Rich, 41.6 million. Confanoche, 27.3 million. University of Ghana Hospital, the UGMC, 2.2 million. Let's go to the next slide. Now, if you do a regional breakdown, the Greater Accra has 25 of these 91 facilities. The total sum there, 130.6 million Ghana cities. Ashanti, 15, 50.05. Western, 11, 22.3. Central, 7, 21.3. Volta, 8, 15.2. And Eastern, 10, 21.03 um, million. Next slide. Now, if you look at the public health facilities in terms of their internally generated funds, it becomes interesting here because we've been told a story about how uh, they are not necessarily allowed to do anything they like with the internally generated funds. But the other side is, if they have all these sums of money, how come they owe... You get it, right? Something doesn't add up. What is going on? Because look, Kolebu, in 2023, January to September, these are actual figures, raised 112.2 million in, in IGF. In 2023... So in, in, in total, you're looking at 149.6 million. Confanochi Teaching Hospital, 83.3 million. Okay, that is January to September. If you add up the total, you're looking at around 111 million. Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, 22.7, confirmed to January to September, a total sum of about 30.3 million. Ho Teaching Hospital, 20.9 million, a total of about 29.6 million. Okay, next slide. And so if those are the sums of money they are raising, the question is, what are they being used for? Are they remaining in these institutions? Does any entity, does the health system have a stake in those sums of money? If they are being retained, what are they being used for? Is it infrastructure? Because we've heard the doctors at CAF, for example, leadership, talk about a number of things they have to take care of. So where exactly is it going? And is it serving the purpose of the generality of us. Those are the questions we ought to be asking. Now, the amount generated per day then, if you are focusing on the Confanochi Teaching Hospital in terms of IGF, you are looking at 234,000 uh, CDs. Per week, 1.6 million Ghana CDs. Per month, 7 million Ghana CDs. Nasikano, ewehe, yadi yadi. But another interesting picture, you also want to look at who is funding Ghana's healthcare delivery? There's a story there as well. Because if you look at the tail of the tape, the blue or the baby blue represents the government of Ghana. The red represents IGF. Uh, this little area you see there, that little bar in between is APFA, and you know where we get that from. And then the yellow is from donor support. So we are basically saying that in billions of Ghana cities, in 2020, the government of Ghana contributed about six 
billion. About another two billion came from IGF. Look at the components. That is about what? 25%. Okay? Coming from IGF. Then the APFA with just a faint dot there or line. And then donor support giving you another 1.5 billion or so. In 2021, we see things come down because the government of Ghana is contributing about maybe 5.7 billion in there. The IGFs have gone down. APFA somewhat remains stable, but donor support has also gone down. And then in 2022, we see a bit of a rebound. But government's figure is still around the same, but uh, the, the IGF goes up more than even in 2020. Donor support remains stable, comparable to 2021. The disparities, what they mean for our health, only God knows. But for us, from where we sit, all we are concerned about is to be able to access these hospital facilities, get a bed, and be able to be treated. If that is not being done, there are problems. People will die needless deaths. Cat's situation can be reflected across the country in many ways. There are medical facilities you go to, public. They don't even have thermometers. Thermometers, they don't have them. Or you didn't know. And that's the truth. Go and read some of the documents they put out. These very same ministries, they know. But having spoken about health, because I mean, what is a nation without a healthy citizenry? I must also talk about something that, you know, I can't think far. I can't think far. Sports, eh? In this country, we can do so much and we invest so much. But see, you know, and the misleadership. And sometimes when I listen to the sports minister, uh, Yusuf and some of the others from the local organizing committee, I honestly get infuriated. Because, follow me. Now, we are saying that in terms of the African games, infrastructure appeal, this is how much we say we invested. University of Ghana Stadium, $34 million. This stadium, that had already been there. And we did fittings and this and that. $34 million. Cape Coast Stadium, right? Last week I mentioned. The whole stadium was put up for $16 million in 2016. We are spending twice as much plus $2 million to renovate the UG Stadium. No wahala. Bottom and Sports Complex, $145 million. I'm still waiting for the breakdown on how we spent $145 million on this. That breakdown will never come. The Games Village, $16 million. The total there, $195 million. But that's not all. How about the local organizing committee? As for them, $47.7 million to cover the operations of the local organizing uh, committee. So if you add the $47.7 million to the $195, you are getting $242.2 million. I'm not talking about CDs, though. Dollars. That's over $2.6 billion Ghana cities. It's way more than that because of the exchange rate now. But let's go to the next slide. Now, this 47.7 million given to the local organizing committee. And I'm sure you've seen their cars, their nice cars in traffic. You've seen them, right? And they're the only them yet, but how to bus our athletes and get them to the spot to perform. That one, they don't know how to do it. But they could buy the fancy cars. You see how we don't think in this country? There's something wrong with us. And when you say it, sometimes people will say, oh, you're being disrespectful. Some of us are not thinking. And even where we are thinking, we are only thinking of our pockets and not how to make the national system work. Because allowances, accommodation, internal transportation, medical equipment, and other, $47.7 million. Sir? So why are we facing these problems? Next slide. Let's go to the next slide, please. Now, if you look at, and, and here's where it gets even more interesting, Ghana for. In 2019, just about a little... Four years ago, because th these games should have happened in 2023. We actually begged for more time. Oh. We begged for more time. That it should be extended for us. And in 2024, games that should have been held in 2023. Look at what we are doing. But well, let's look at the tail of the tape. Morocco in 2019, just a few years ago, spent $46 million. Wonderful African games. Wonderful. $46 million. Ghana, in 2024, yeah, <laughs> $242 million. That is a disparity of almost 
200 million. That's about $198 million. Difference in less than five years. How, how do we even explain these things? How? Do we do something exceedingly different? And you see, after all of these sums of money, you would expect the bar to be raised very, very, very high. Then you come and see that, oh, <laughs> the lights at the Cape Coast Stadium went out twice during Ghana's opening game against Ethiopia in the women's football event over the past weekend. Light info, we couldn't coordinate properly. No fuel in ambulances. Ambulances. So, obituses here or there's an issue that the person could have died. No fuel in ambulances. The ambulances were there, but no fuel. Hey, wonderful. Cyclists purchased their bicycles and equipment. And you see, this one, when I was listening to the LOC, and they were talking about, and, and the sports minister, and, and it's the, the federation. That didn't let us know. And we didn't know that we needed, uh, is it fiber, fiber uh, bikes rather than whatever, aluminum or whatever bikes. Ah, bah. Ah, bah. What kind of thinking is this? So you left everything to them. You didn't know about some of these dynamics. So someone was riding the bike. It broke. A top athlete in, in that regard. And so we lost out. And the explanation is, can you imagine that? The athletes were, the cyclists were purchasing their bicycles and equipment. So that, those 47.7 million. Ekwahi, where the money day? Next slide. Now, players received their equipment late, a lot of them. And it affected their performance. If you're going to train and do stuff and you're getting your equipment a day before or close to when you have to perform, which athlete, no matter how good, is going to perform at their optimum? Tell me. No, you tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> Maybe I'll hear you from the other side. Now, badminton players went to the event in the bucket of their coach truck. There was no way of convening them to the venue. And so players who were going to play badminton had to use their coach truck and be in the bucket which is actually something dangerous to do. Clap for Ghana's local organizing committee. Clap for them. Oh my God, yeah, do Clap for the sports ministry. Wonderful sports ministry. A1. Mwah. No be so. What a shame. What a shame. The Theodosia Oko hockey pitch is still under construction. Now, let me, let me quickly get this back. The Theodosia Oko hockey pitch. We'll just rectify this and get it back. It's still under construction. There it is. So let's get back to it. It's still under construction. At this time, when you have sought time, begged for time, the pitch is still under construction. Look, look, look at the place. Laying of the turf is yet to commence. We have footage from there. Hockey will now begin on March 17 instead of March 15. And let's go to the last slide because I want us to see this image. It is, it is a very uh, heartbreaking image. You look at the pitch. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, the, the very last one. You look at the pitch, right? And they are now, they are now putting, I don't know whether they are painting or they are now sticking the grass because I'm talking about the UG pitch, University of Ghana pitch, right? C can we see that footage? Can we go to that slide? There's a final slide I, I have to look at. We are looking at, you will see them actually putting, really? And this is what we spent $47.7 million on. And even that one, the pitch where they are, you, I, I'll find time and show it to you. You actually see them, they are now, I said Sakura, and they are now fixing it. And that's part of the infrastructure, the $195 million. When you talk, they say, what is that? But in the midst of all of this, yeah, I'm not done yet. I told you today, give me time. I need to talk, I need to vent because I can't think far. The 13th African Games, Ghana's performance over the years. I just want to walk you through this. 2011, 
Now, you are looking at the yellow represents number of medals. The, the red bar represents position, yeah? In 2011, we won 17 medals. We placed 12, right? 2015, 19 medals. It increased by two. We placed 20th. 2019, 13 medals. We placed 15th. 2023, well, as of yesterday, we had about five medals. And mind you, the MMA, it's a demonstration sport. So all those medals will count as one. We are currently perched at 14th, yeah? You can see that in terms of medals, you see the trend. 17, 19 slightly up, then a dip from 2019 till now. Of course, these games are not done, so we'll allow time on, on, on that. If you look at the positioning, Egypt, South Africa, Nigeria, Algeria, the powerhouses, Tunisia, Mauritius, Madagascar, Eritrea, Morocco, Zimbabwe, Libya, Namibia, Uganda, and uh, there you have Ghana. Poorly organized games. Poorly organized and poorly executed. I'll give them the props for the opening ceremony. That was okay. Poorly organized, poorly executed. I want value for money. You should want that too. Whether you are MPP or NDC or whatever, you should want that too. Because it's our money. You may not see it, but it's our money that is being used like this. In disgracing us. And oh, that is the pitch. That's where I'm going to end. The 30, $34 million expended on the University of Ghana. And Nuni, so I'm going to paint you, so I'm going to you, painting Mamento. There you are. Ghana for you. See the size of the pitch. If you see it physically. <sighs> anyway, Ghana for. Um, it is what it is. It is what it is. But until we wake up and speak, this kind of stuff will keep going on because not just politicians, technocrats, people on authority will feel we can cut corners, do anything, and yeah, we'll get away with it. But let's not allow them to get away with it. Let's hold them firmly to accountability. That's how Ghana will progress. My name is Benjamin Akako. These are my blunt thoughts shared with you. Raw, hot, and edited, and diluted. When I come here, no mincing words. Thank you for watching, and may God bless our motherland Ghana and make her great and strong.